people do lotto or football pools or gambling, what they're doing is they're doing something that's more rational than you would suppose. The expected value may seem to you to be less than the cost of entering the game. But to them, you see, the value of that expected value, to them, is approaching infinity. I could be a millionaire or a billionaire or whatever it is, you see. And there's a tiny possibility, tiny, tiny possibility of it. But a tiny possibility of an infinite game is still infinite. So they do it. There are constraints, of course. They'd like to eat as well and not spend all their money on the pools, on the on the lotto. <laughs> well, hopefully, otherwise they have an addiction problem and you're, and you're you're in trouble. They're in trouble, aren't they? And they need rescue. But do you see? There's a certain rationality behind it. That a tiny fraction of an infinite game is infinitely worthwhile, and I'm going to do it. A major cost to me, ah, then I might start to be a bit cautious. You know, is this going to wipe me out? I'm going to not have food to eat today because I put it all on the lotto. Uh, no, I don't think I want to do that. Good. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. <laughs> I don't want to be in that sort of position where I'm going to end up thinking like that, either that I will put it all on the letter. That's just suicide, isn't it? You see the difference? I don't want you to be a martyr for me, but I do want you to use your surplus. And I give you much surplus. I give you much more than you need. Use some of that surplus to engage me for eternity and your reward will be infinite. Yes? Go for it. Go for it. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I should perhaps uh, define what I mean by expected return. That's the probability times the value if I win. Okay? The probability times the value if I lose is obviously the cost of buying the ticket, entering the competition. The expected win is the probability of winning times the value, the prize of winning, which if it's a million or a billion may be just about approaching infinity really in the mind of uh, someone who's say on a a fairly minimum standard of living. And, and to him, though, the value of winning is just wonderful. He sees his life as being utterly transformed, which, of course, it could do if it was spent wisely. It might be wasted, of course, on another gamble. <laughs> okay. So... The value might, in his mind, reasonably be equated to infinity, whereas the cost is trivial. But of course, if he buys too many tickets, well, the cost mounts up, doesn't it? And it becomes significant, and it means a lower standard of living if he loses, and he may be aware that he's still got a very low chance of winning. And uh, this will discourage him from, presumably, um, gambling too much. So, God is not wanting his children to kill themselves trying to get to heaven. It doesn't require you to be crucified or martyred. It just reasonably expects that you use your resources wisely to continue life now because you've been endowed with a, an incredible drive to stay alive, to hang on to life. This gives you the opportunity of entering eternal life. The absence of transitory life leaves you with out that opportunity. So he's giving you that opportunity and you're not to waste it. You're not meant to jump off the bridge or, you know, nobly um, 
kill yourself in order to do something noble. You're not required to do that. And it's not wanting it either. If he wants to rescue someone, he can. Yesterday, if he chooses. But he does expect you to value life eternal to the extent that you do do that which is necessary to attain it. In other words, use your surplus, at least some of it, to indicate how important life eternal is to you. It must be important or you won't keep the values of heaven. And it must be important for you to keep your own values now that you truly value to find out if they are the right values in practice or in listening very carefully to whatever wise counselling you might be open to, you know, or, or, or good scripture or good encouragement, love from loved ones. Not expecting you to kill yourself, to attempt life eternal, that's not reasonable. He is expecting you to value the things of heaven and to use your surplus resources, at the very least some of it, to that end of finding out how does one attain life eternal. So you practice holiness and you find some things are not holy. And you think, I've wasted my time. You know, I've set to uh, I don't know, doing something that you thought would be a fine practice and would make you holy, and it's not. Uh, you may think, oh, I've just been to the wrong church, perhaps I would have tried a different one. But you, you see what I mean? In some sense, you start to look around and think, oh, I can't have got things quite right. What have I got wrong? Am I valuing something that shouldn't be valued? Or not valuing something that should be valued? Am I in error? seek out good advice, don't you? You read scripture to see and, and so on and so forth. Whatever it is, whatever your way of truly worshipping what you value, your God, if you put that first, then you find out. But you will need to use resources. Not all your resources so that you're dead tomorrow. <laughs> That's not likely to be the best strategy. Thank you, Dad. <laughs>